to the bar? He'd be in trouble. But you know how I go like this? <laughs> Under Biden, the USA has been turned into a dumping ground of the world. So we have a couple of... Does anyone want to hear the snake? Do you know the snake? Should I do it? So this is a... I just happen to have a copy with me. Uh, this is a... was a song, actually, a long time ago. And I sort of changed it around a little bit. I just, it just reminded me of our border and what's happening. And I do this because, uh, and people think it's cute, and, but most people that are smart say, boy, that's a problem because this is what's happening to our country at the border. On her way to work one morning, down the path along the lake, a tender-hearted woman saw a poor, half-frozen snake. His pretty colored skin had been all frosted with the dew. Poor thing, she cried, I'll take you in and I'll take care of you. Have you heard this before? And how much do you love it, right? Take me in, O oh tender woman, take me in for heaven's sake. Take me in, O oh tender woman, cried the vicious snake. She wrapped him up all cozy in a comforter of silk and laid him by her fireside with some honey and some milk. She hurried home from work that night, and soon as she arrived, she found the pretty snake she'd taken in had survived. Take me in, O oh tender woman, take me in for heaven's sake. Take me in, O oh tender woman, cried the vicious snake. She clutched him to her bosom. You're so beautiful, she cried. But if I hadn't brought you in by now, you truly would have died. She stroked his pretty skin again and kissed and held him tight. But instead of saying, thank you, ma'am, the snake gave her a vicious bite. Take me in, O oh tender woman. Take me in for heaven's sake. Take me in, O oh tender woman sighed the vicious snake. I saved you, cried the woman, and you've bitten me. But why? You know your bite is poisonous, and now I'm going to die. Shut up, silly woman, said the reptile with a grin. You knew damn well I was a snake before you took me in. Thank you. So... When we're taking in, when we're taking in people from prisons all over the world, when we're taking in people from mental institutions and insane asylums from all over the world, if you take a look at the population of mental institutions all over the world, you see it's way down. Some are empty because it's all being dropped and deposited and dumped right into the United States. How stupid are we? And that is a very accurate portrayal of what's happening, but what's going to happen. There's a 100% chance of terror in our country. This isn't like, oh, gee, you know, I fought like hell with the terror ban. I got it approved, ultimately, by the Supreme Court of the United States. I didn't want to have people come in from countries that like blowing each other up. And we had no terror for four years. We didn't have one incident. We didn't have any. And I could never talk about it. Even during the election, I couldn't talk about it because I didn't want to do that in the following day something happens. I didn't want to even give people ideas. We had no terror. None. We defeated ISIS. We had no terror. Nobody's ever done the job that we've done. But, you know, that is just emblematic. We are taking in people from jails and prisons. You know, there is a slight difference in those words from, from mental institutions and insane asylums. We're taking in terrorists at numbers that are massive. They're massive. We're taking in massive numbers of people. We have no idea where they come from. We don't vet them. We have no security. They just pour into our country. It's 100% certain that terrible things are going to happen. And we have no chance. Like Dwight Eisenhower, he was a big deportation president because they were having a problem. By the way, nothing like this. No country's ever had a problem like this. There's never been a problem like this. Nothing like this. But he deported, you know, hundreds of thousands of people that came into our country illegally. 
And so we're going to, unfortunately, have to have a mass deportation because no country can withstand this. No country. No country can withstand this. So upon taking office, I will terminate every open borders policy of the Biden administration and begin the largest deportation operation in America. We, we have no choice. I don't want to do that. You know, I don't want to do that, but we have no choice. It's not sustainable. It's, a, it's not affordable. We owe, we owe $36 trillion. It's not affordable, but it's not sustainable as a country. You see where they're coming in and